Hello, everybody. I think I was trying to go for everybody, but I said everyone, so it came out everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jaybird, and welcome back to Narcissu Side Second. Uh, yeah! <laughs> I got my seaweed snacks next to me because I fucking love them. Don't judge me. I'm not gonna eat them, so. During this, because this is very intense. This game is very intense. It's supposed to be very. You're supposed to take it very seriously, okay? Okay! Um, anyways, let's continue. Mean, mean, mean. Hot. <laughs> Hot. Even though it was still morning, the asphalt looked wavy from the heat. That is called heat waves. Today also looked like it would be a hot day. Yes. And in that, as always, I headed towards the hospital alone. With this distance, even though I could have gone in my pajamas when I had to go out, I've come to wear my sailor uniform. Most likely, I was still wavering. How long, how long this wavering will continue, not even I knew. One day, I may suddenly just be able to give up. It was just that I had come to think that the span of three years was more than enough time for a person to change. Mm-hmm. Actually, yes, it is. I've, I've changed drastically in the past three years. I went from a super shy kid who didn't talk a lot to someone who's still shy just a little bit but is more confident and talks a little bit more, I guess, but not too much. I'm still shy. And there are classes where I'm completely mutant because I have no one else to talk to. But I have come out of my shell a lot and I'm proud of myself. Okay, uh, shh, shh. anyways, let's get in here the game. Um, before I have a seizure or something. <laughs> before I have an aneurysm. Then passing by that school, and as the entrance to the hospital was before my uh, uh, And then passing by that school, and as the entrance to the hospital was before my eyes. Oh no, the button's falling off. In my hands was a small tote bag. I noticed that the button that held the handle was fraying off. How long had it been like that? I didn't know, but coming all this way, I didn't. I wasn't going to go back home. So I held the bag to my chest and continued towards the hospital. The usual doctor, the usual exchanges, and today's examination ended. When my body's condition was stable, it was once a week. Three times a week seemed to be a sign of a short hospitalization. With this, this week's examination was over. As I thought that, I headed towards the exit on the first floor. In the afternoon, the doctors weren't seeing patients, so the halls were mostly empty. Occasionally, a doctor would walk by with a group of intern-like people in tow. Nurses rushed to the first aid window. A patient, probably under dietary restrictions, was in the shop buying snacks. Their wristband was visible, green, which I heard was for digestive, d digestive disorders. All of this was just the ordinary, everyday hospital. And in front of that shop was the first time that I met her. Oh! Yeah, hey, you. <laughs> Suddenly, a bright voice called out to me and surprised me. Turning around before me was the pajama-clad figure of an onne-san I didn't recognize. Onne-san? I, th I had thought it might have been someone I met while I was admitted here, but I didn't recall the face or figure. Anika. Yes. That button is falling off, you know. As she spoke, she pointed at my tote bag. It might have been a simple act of kindness, but since I had already noted the problem, I, fa I had trouble finding a reply. So, ne. Why? Yes, it is. So, so <laughs> Why, yes, it is? That's it? That's, you've nothing else to say? <laughs> Thank you. As I spoke, I lowered my head a bit. Because I already knew my reply came out. My reply came out hesitant. Hesit. Hesit. Jesus Christ, that was a hard thing to say. God, 
took me a minute there. <laughs> but even then, it was too difficult to say thank you very much. The only son that I hadn't seen before, her long black hair and bright voice left an impression. Looking at her slippers, the kind provided by the hospital, she was probably not an outpatient, but admitted. Looking at her thin wrist, her wristband was white. That was a color I hadn't seen before. White? White isn't a color. It's the absence of color. Absence of color. But whatever, that's just a color theory. That's just a theory! Color theory! <laughs> oh, thanks for watching! Smash that like button in the face like a boss! I don't know. I'm sorry. Now let's start you. Say, how about I fix it for you? I have a sewing set. But at her sudden, sudden words, I hesitated. Stop hesitating! God, woman, get your act together! But not over a button that didn't mean much. These past few years, because of because my existence was always only being erased, I've had absolutely no experience with someone actively trying to relate with me. Don't worry about it. Look, come over here. Come here. Don't worry. It's not like it'll be a weird place. With those words, she started walking briskly. And while wrapped in mixed feelings, I followed behind. Nice. Ooh. We got into the elevator. I thought my game was about to freeze for a second. I'm like, oh no, don't you dare freeze on me, I'm recording video. We got into the elevator. Without a word, she pressed the button for the highest floor. Seventh floor? Oh, do you know about it? Uh, not much. The seventh floor, the place they called the hospice. I wasn't too familiar with it, and of course I've never been there. For one thing, I heard that people not involved with it were barred from entering. It probably meant that if this Onesan here were headed to the seventh floor, she was a person from there. Soon the elevator reached its, its stop, and right in front of the door was the nurse's station. And when the doors opened, all together, the gazes of the nurses turned toward us. Uh, this is someone I know. With that one sentence, they once again went back to their work. No one looked towards us anymore. It was just my first time here. But without putting my finger on it, I thought the atmosphere was especially heavy. Yeah, because it's filled with dying people. <laughs> the place the only son finally took me to looked like a lounged area. It was very different from the third or from the third or other floors that I've been admitted to. Those didn't have these sofas or the TV. I'll fix this for you quick, okay? With that, she took my tote bag and, with what seemed like a practice hand, began fixing the button. And like her, I sat down in the sofa and watched. You don't sit in the sofa, you sit on the sofa. Even if I looked around, there were a few signs of people. Occasionally, an elderly or helper-like person going by was about all. By the way... Did you catch a cold? Or you're visiting someone? Right now, I'm an outpatient. I hesitated over how to answer, but said the truth. I heard that I had just been discharged recently and was an outpatient now. I see. Looks like you've got it hard too. By the way, what club are you in? Club? Well, it's supposed to be summer break, right? As she spoke, she pointed at my uniform. Maybe 
You've been in the hospital, so maybe the literature club? Oh, Doki Doki, don't you dare make your way back into here. Uh -uh. Doki Doki. Uh, I should play that game. I mean, I have played that game, but it's been a while, and it would be interesting. I'm gonna wait until it's, it's been about a year since I've played it, so then I could play it again and be like, playing Doki Doki after a year of it being out. <laughs> That'd be interesting, right? Because by that time, forgotten all the juicy details. Or maybe the manager of a sports club? Not really, I'm not in any. Oh, that's an unexpected answer. Is it that you hate pa pajamas? At the sudden perceptive question, I couldn't find the words to respond with. It's not that I hated pajamas, but I sensed that the precise reason would be difficult to put into words. And what that Oni-san had asked, Oni-san had asked, was probably aimed straight at that. She hadn't simply been asking whether I liked pajamas, literally. Oni-san wa... koko no hito. Oni-san, you're someone from here? Yeah, even though I look like this, I'm a resident of the seventh floor. I guess the short of it is someone whose death has been confirmed. That which I had only known on the level of rumors was now clearly spelled out by a resident of the seventh floor. She used the word death in such bright and relaxed tones. At the least, it didn't seem like I could comprehend. Well, she's just... Oh, uh, there have been studies that, like, the older you get, the more happy you are because you realize how much time you have left on this earth. So you gotta... You, you want to be happy and um, experience life and like just enjoy every last bit of it till your last days are, are done, you know? So it's probably the same mentality for people who know that, oh, I'm gonna die in like three months because I have cancer or something and they can't cure it. So it's probably, it's, maybe it's the same for them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've never been in that position and I haven't known anybody in that position. Well, I actually have, but I haven't, like, personally known their struggles. I've just only heard, like, oh, hey, your relative died of cancer. And I'm like, oh. Okay. I know that sounds really unempathetic, but it's like, it's relatives that I haven't seen in years or talked to or even seen in person in years. Like, I mean, I feel bad, but I, w I would feel a lot worse if I actually, you know, saw them at least once in a while, you know? But that's just me. I don't know if any other people are like that. But anyways, this person, what on earth could her thoughts be? Hey, hey, if it's alright with you, come again to play. There's nothing to do and it's boring. Plus, for here, visiting hours go until late. And with that, she told me various things about the seventh floor. Up until now, it had been vague, but it seemed like the it seemed that the rumors that it was a place to wait to die were true. There are other rules, but I can't say any more. Why? Well, that should be obvious. Because you are not a resident of this place. It was only then, when she whispered that, her did her face cloud. I felt that expression held loneliness, and seemed filled with intensity as well. Right now, I was wearing these clothes, steeped with the lingering regret for once normal days. And unlike myself, this Onesan, 
No, these residents of the seventh floor had probably given up on everything and already had made up their resolve. Well, even if it's just when you come for examinations, drop by. Since no matter how hard I try, there's only about half a year left. She said that, and by way of farewell, she once more turned her cheery face towards me. Long black hair, white wristband, and a bright, relaxed way of talking were my impressions. Still, neither of us knew the other's name. My 15th summer. This was our first meeting. Interesting. Um, well, guys, that's gonna be it for this episode of Narcus Suicide Second. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye bye!